All right, so now that we have covered maximum margin classifiers, we can go and define the main topic of this unit, which is support vector machines. So the support vector machine was actually invented way back in 1963. So it's, you know, almost 60 years old um, right now. Um, and it was developed by a very famous contributor to this field, Vladimir um, Vapnik. And this book in particular was very influential. Although it was really invented back um, in 63, it was really the kernel trick that happened a little bit later that made it um, become so widely used. We're going to talk about that kernel trick in the final um, section. And one of the first demonstrations of this method success was actually in character recognition. And the key idea of support vector machines is the idea of slack. So we saw that the maximum margin classifier has the problem that it doesn't let the data, it only works when the data is perfectly separable. So it tries to exactly separate every point. The concept of slack is that it allows points to be misclassified during training, but that will let it not only just work on non-separable data, but will also improve the generalization error. All right. To define the SVM, we have to define something called the hinge loss. And this is the idea. So if you recall the notation from the previous section, there was this parameter gamma. Throughout this whole part, I'm just going to set gamma to be 1. And then if I wanted to find a classifier that perfectly separated the data, it means that I can find a W and B satisfying this property here. That's just the same property that we had um, written earlier about gamma equals 1. So I want yi times the linear function on that data to be always uh, greater than equal to 1 for all samples. Or equivalently, if I took a linear function of that data, call it zi, I want yi times zi to be greater than or equal to 1. But we know we can't always find such a classifier. So I'm going to um, define something called the hinge loss. The hinge loss is this weird function here, and it's drawn like this. So just to give you an idea of what this is, just let's look at some regimes. So when yi times zi is greater than 1, the hinge loss is 0. So I'm going to try to find somehow something that minimizes this hinge loss. So 0 would be great. But the point is, I, don't, I allow points to actually have um, violate this constraint, but I just they'll just pay a penalty, and the penalty will kind of be linearly proportional to that distance from that constraint. Now, within this region, there's two important um, um, regions, if you like. So, between zero and one is the point where we're kind of violating this uh, distance that we wanted but we're still classifying the uh, um, sample correctly. And it's classifying the sample correctly because y, zi is um, the same sign as yi. But beyond this, I'm even allowing points to be misclassified, and that will happen when this value is less than 0. So I'll make you do some calculations to make sure you understand that um, concept. So now that we have this hinge loss, we can define the SVM optimization. So again, we have some data, xi, yi, and then SVM just minimizes this cryptic looking function here. So let me walk you through this to, for you to understand what this function is. There's kind of three points I want to point out to you. The first term, this thing here, is actually none other than just the hinge loss because it's exactly that max of 0, 1 minus this expression here. So when I try to minimize this, I'm trying to minimize that hinge loss across the samples. So I'm trying to get the points as far away from the margin as possible. But I, don't, I let some points not be uh, within the margin, and I, in fact, even let some points be misclassified if needed. The next point here term is this. 
And now remember that the margin is gamma over norm of w, but gamma in my case is 1. So this is just inversely proportional to the margin. So if I try to make this small, we'll try to make the margin large. So this part's kind of like a maximum margin classifier if I just minimize this. But I'm also letting some terms uh, violate that margin. So I can have a large margin, which would be um, a large margin, but then I'll have to uh, uh, have the cost that there'll be more terms that are violating that margin. And this final parameter C will trade off these two components. We're going to talk about C a little bit later. It's a little bit tricky to pick, but we'll uh, work through that and understand the trade-offs. Now, you can rewrite this uh, expression just by doing some algebraic manipulations. This is the exact same expression as what I wrote in the previous slide. All I've done, though, is I've replaced that hinge loss term by this term epsilon i, or 1 minus epsilon i, as, as written here. And then when you write it in this form here, you can rewrite this here as this. This is the same. And this epsilon i, of course, is none other than just the one norm of these epsilons. Now, one important uh, concept, and whenever you do support factors, is the idea of what's called the support, support vector machines. It's what's called the support factors. And support vectors are just the samples that are either exactly on the margin or on the wrong side of the margin. So if we had data like this, and let's just say that the FCVM picks this line like this, and it picks this margin, which are these two um, dotted or uh, lines on the two sides. So all of these red points which are uh, and blue points which are uh, circled in green are the support factors because they either line up right on the margin or they violate that margin constraint. Now, the important thing about the support vectors is the following, that if you take the points which are not support vectors and you move them in any way, then they will not change the final solution. So it's kind of robust, if you like, to all the non-support vector points. So if there's noise here, it doesn't affect that. Okay. Now, with that in mind, we can talk about how to pick that mysterious parameter C. Remember that C, what it does is it trades off the hinge loss term and the margin term. So if you pick a high C term, you're trying to penalize the hinge loss. If you pick a low C, you're trying to penalize the um, margin, or you want to make the margin as big as possible. Uh, before I go on, let me just say that actually if you're following the text, C has the opposite meaning in the text, but I've kept the C here to be consistent with what SK learned us. All right, so if we have low C, what it tries to do, remember that the C is penalizing the other term, the hinge loss term. So if you pe don't penalize that, you're penalizing the margin. So you try to have um, a very large margin um, uh, in, your, uh, in your solution. So it would look kind of like this. So here's the line and you're having an extremely large margin uh, shown here. All right, so you'll have many more support uh, um, vectors in that, uh, in that case. On the other hand, so what it does by having many more support vectors, it reduces the variance. Of the, of the data, or equivalently, it increases the bias because you're using more terms in that uh, minimization. Now, on the other hand, if you pick a very large C, you're getting a very um, uh, small margin, um, and, but you're using fewer and fewer support factors, like shown here on the bottom right. So it becomes highly fit to the data. And then what this, you can say, is doing is it's lowering the bias but it's having a higher variance. So there's more chance to overfit. So that's kind of conceptually how it works to pick these two off. And obviously what we'll do then is pick it through cross-validation as we'll show later on. Now, one final thing I want to point out here is actually this hinge loss term is not that much different than what we saw with logistic regression. So if we um, take a look at logistic regression, 
we could say that logistic regression is just also minimizing some loss, but it looks like our um, function like this. If we plot this function, which we've been doing up to now, that is that red line. You can see it's actually very close to the hinge loss like this. So really, the SVM is doing something very similar to logistic um, regression, but with just a slightly different loss. Okay, so that wraps up SVMs um, without the kernel trick. We're going to talk about the kernel trick next. But before you do that, just to make sure you understand the um, ideas, try the problem out on the in-class uh, um, GitHub, uh, sorry, Jupyter Notebook. And uh, it's a simple calculation with some hinge losses. And once you do that, then move on to the next section.